God's exit strategy. God's exit strategy. As you all know, last year, I opened up by telling you all, being transparent, gave you all a window into one of my struggles, and that was I'm flirting. <laughs> and, um, and I'm still flirting. I'm flirting with this idea, and I have am almost to make a permanent commitment. And I'm about to make a commitment to the notion that Jesus died the way he lived. He died the way he lived. And although my exegetical commitment, as I was reminded by Dr. Harry F. Wright, will not exhaust the vast riches of this text, I do see where his coming among us was as a gift. God so loved the world that he gave his only son. And when you look at the story, his presence among us was a three-year drama of giving. Everything he did was about giving. Everywhere he went, he was giving. He gave joy of wine to a watered-down wedding. He gave healing to the sick, sight to the blind, strength to the infirm, deliverance to the possessed, refreshing streams of life to those whose lives have become parched with an insatiable thirst. He gave meaning to the purposeless, direction for the aimless, and new life for the desperate. The summary of Jesus' life is that he was a giving Jesus. Tell somebody that he was a giving Jesus. Amen. And what brings and what brings us to this moment is the fact that he gave salvation to you and me. Amen. Are y'all with me? Amen. Here we are. Here we are. For the past nearly three hours, we have been strangely drawn to a scene to watch a man die. Are y'all with me? And we're not here because we are so enamored with death or receive some sadistic kick out of looking at reruns of a man being crucified, we're drawn to this scene because our faith strangely informs us that even while Jesus died, he's going to give us something. He's going to give us something. Are y'all with me? Uh, the first word was a gift for everyone because we all need forgiveness. The second word was a gift for the left out because there's always some people who have been damaged by a psyche of being left out. The third word was a church gift, a gift for the remnant, for those who remain. The fourth was a gift for the abandoned, those who know something about darkness at noonday. The fifth word was a gift for those who seek to reclaim their humanity. The sixth word was a gift which empowered us to stop hell in our lives. Are y'all with me? Hell stops when you tell it to stop. I wish I had a witness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you got to tell it to stop. Touch somebody and say, stop it, stop it. Stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's finished. But, but this final word is a summary word. It draws to prayerful conclusion the intentions of the preceding six word. In the seventh word, Jesus demonstrates that as awful and evil as the cross seems, it represents God handing us an exit strategy. The seventh word is a gift for all of those who need a way out. Am I talking to somebody? It provides us an eternal exit from the bondages of sin, but it also provides God an exit from his rightful response to the presence of sin. We get out of the weight of bondage, and God gets a way out of demonstrating holiness in the presence of damnable evil. We get out with our humanity intact, and God gets out with his, with, 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 uh, without compromising his divinity. And see, some of y'all get along well with a compromised God. 
Y'all not ready to help me. But I don't, you know, but, but, but I don't know about you. I need God's divinity to be intact. I don't need God compromised. And my getting out doesn't mean a thing if God doesn't get out. Unlike George Bush, who would, he, who would lead America uh, into a war with no clue on how we're going to get out of there. Uh, but God used the cross as an exit strategy. Are y'all with me? And, and the seventh word summarizes God's plan on how to take control of the senselessness of life without losing your dignity and faith. Someone needs to hear this word because someone here has been subject to the worst of evil and you need a way out. Someone present here today, you have been struggling with an oppressive situation and you need a way out. Someone needs a way out without feeling you have compromised and reduced your humanity into something you know you are not. Someone needs this word because life has you bound in a cruciform and you have no idea how you're going to get out. And this word is strangely slipped to us. Y'all not going to help me. It, it, it slipped to us in a disguise of a crucifixion. It looks like evil had the upper hand. It even feels like evil may prove victorious. For 12 long hours, Jesus has been in the hands of evil men subject to their cruelty and dehumanizing way. It appears that Jesus' death may come to naught, but this word reveals that God used the seen at Calvary as an exit strategy. Are y'all with me? This word informs us that none of us need to surrender to the evil in our lives. We have a way out and God has a way out without compromising who he is as God. And I don't know about you, I praise God for an exit. Touch somebody, say I'm out of here, I'm out of here, I'm out of here. Watch, 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 watch. Listen to his words within the context of the scene. Because if you don't hear it within the context of the scene, you're not going to hear it at all. But there's one scene, and the text says that the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn into. Am I right about it? Uh, the crucifixion caused an eerie darkness to settle upon the earth. The person and personality of God was, uh, uh, was un under assault. Yet under a heavy cloak of darkness, God provided eternal and universal access to his presence and power in the midst of darkness the traditional arrangement that separated us from the presence of God was torn asunder no one had access to that behind the veil but at this time in the present darkness the veil was rent in Talk to me, somebody. It was rent in twain. It was torn asunder. The veil in the temple was torn in two. We now have access. I'm getting ready to date myself, but Gil Scott Heron, once I dated myself, Gil Scott Heron uh, wrote, wrote a song, Winter in America. And it's dark. In America, we are experiencing unprecedented darkness in every traditional arena of American life, in our homes, economically, socially, politically, environmentally, and even spiritually. Yet this word informs us that in the darkest hour, we don't have to limit our lives to traditional arrangement. Y'all not catching this. We are not we are not defined by what has been. Calvary tells us that the traditional arrangements have been torn asunder. Help me, Obama. Obama's presidency is a testimony that the traditional arrangements have been torn asunder. None of us have to limit our lives in darkness. We can go beyond what we see.